Conspiracy theories are a dime a dozen on the internet, some of which are so outlandish that they border on the ridiculous. But as strange as these theories may seem to you and me, there are many people who truly believe in them, and in many cases, they claim to have proof to back their claims up. Number 10. Most of us were taught at an early age that Christopher Columbus was the one who discovered that the Earth was round. We were also taught that he set out to prove his theory in 1492, when he sailed from Spain to Asia, heading west rather than east to the surprise of those who still believed that the Earth was flat, as they were certain that he would sail right off the edge of the world, never to be seen again. The truth of the matter is that this is a pure fallacy. Mathematicians, scientists, and philosophers started making notes about the curvature of the Earth as far back as 600 BC. And it's far more likely that Pythagoras and Aristotle had a hand in revealing that we live on a globe, rather than a flat disk that's floating through space. Since then, we've collected solid proof that the Earth is a sphere, including photos that were taken from space. The fact that we can see the Earth's curvature when flying in a plane, and the shadow that the Earth casts on the Moon during a lunar eclipse, to name just a few. But not everyone is convinced. There are still thousands of people across the globe who believe in the flat earth theory, and they claim to have proof that this is the case and that the rest of us are being misled. They've suggested that not only the earth, but also the moon, the sun, and all visible stars exist inside a dome that covers the entire planet. Not only this, but they also believe that space has been made up by scientists and that not only the moon landing, but also photos that have been taken from the International Space Station have been faked, the latter with the use of Photoshop software. As for why the moon and the sun rise and set every day, they explain that both celestial bodies are roughly the same size, about 30 miles in diameter, and that they move in a circular path around the North Pole at a height of around 3,400 miles, hence resulting in day and night. When asked why no one has fallen off the edge of the world yet, they claim that it would be impossible since the edges of the world are lined with Antarctic ice, which is impossible to traverse. While many flat earthers believe this ice rim to be the edge of our planet, others have hypothesized that the sheet of ice goes on forever and that the earth actually stretches out infinitely in all directions. Many people who believe in this theory have set out to prove that they're right, with some strapping cameras to homemade rockets that are then said to travel upward for a short while before purportedly hitting the invisible dome that encapsulates our planet. They also claim that what we see as the curvature of the Earth from a high vantage point is merely the edge of the planet that creates an optical illusion, giving us the impression that the Earth is round. There are also many flat earth theorists who've claimed that there's no such thing as gravity. They state that the disk, known as Earth, accelerates upward at a rate of about 32 feet per second squared, and that this results in the illusion that the rest of us call gravity. But there are some factors that even fellow flat earthers are in disagreement about. Strangely, some believe that while the Earth is completely flat, the Moon and Sun are spheres, and that an anti-Moon exists which obscures the actual moon during the day. Others believe that the moon is completely transparent, allowing it to function like a spotlight that illuminates different parts of our planet as it moves through the sky. Others believe that the moon doesn't exist at all, but that it's being projected against the dome that covers the Earth. As many as 1% of Americans have stated that they believe the Earth is flat, with a further 6% stating that they aren't sure whether it's round or flat. Many of us find it hard to believe that there are people out there who buy into this theory, but it's easy to see why this has happened. Once someone catches wind of any theory, they can search the internet for information, but are more likely to click on sources that support that theory, therefore making it seem even more plausible. Another reason why people have been tricked into believing this theory is mistrust of the world governments. Once one conspiracy theorist states that a government agency such as NASA is hiding the truth from members of the public, those who already have mistrust will readily jump on the bandwagon and then find what they see as proof that they're correct. The flat earth theory is one that won't go away anytime soon, since articles and videos on the subject are being uploaded to the internet on a daily basis. And for now, all the rest of us can do is watch as the two sides carry on debating. Number 9. 
In 2019, the world was introduced to 5G, and it was hailed to become the next generation of speedy mobile networks, promising never-before-seen internet speeds and the most stable connections that we've ever had. Before 5G, there was 4G, which was already a huge leap up from its predecessor of 3G, Edge, LTE, and H+. Mobile phone and internet users were excited about the prospect of connecting faster than ever before. But as with most new technologies, there are many skeptics, some of whom feared that 5G could be harmful, to say the least. Many people argued that 5G's introduction and the outbreak of the coronavirus was no mere coincidence, and that it was directly responsible for the pandemic, since it enabled the COVID-19 virus to spread more readily. An Australian Facebook group against the release of 5G gained as many as 32,000 members after its creation all of whom bought into this theory. In the UK, people who were fearful of the new technology went as far as vandalizing the new towers, setting them alight, or damaging them despite calls for calm from the region's Minister of Communications. The Ruby Princess, a cruise ship that contained 600 infected people, was said to have been saturated with 5G signals, and that this was the cause for the massive outbreak. The truth is that the ship had no 5G services at the time, and that the passengers only had access to roaming services. Others suggested that the 5G signal wasn't directly responsible for the outbreak, but that it had seriously affected the immune systems of those who used it, and hence made them more susceptible to infection. More than 27,000 people signed a petition to stop the introduction of 5G despite the fact that there was no evidence whatsoever to prove that it could have any adverse effects on its users. To help put a stop to these rumors, YouTube announced that it would be removing any videos that claimed there was a link between 5G and the coronavirus. This decision was made after a video was uploaded to the platform in which an American doctor claimed that areas where 5G had not been introduced, specifically African countries, were not being affected by the virus as badly as more modern countries. Before it was removed, the video had gained almost 670,000 views and no doubt convinced many people that the conspiracy theory was correct, since these claims are being made by a medical professional. Others were less concerned about the spread of the virus being transmitted via radio frequencies, but were worried that 5G might result in exposure to dangerous levels of radiation. But this theory has also since been debunked, since radio frequency waves exist in the form of non-ionizing radiation that not only cannot penetrate a human skin, but are unable to affect our DNA in any way whatsoever. While most people weren't too concerned about the introduction of 5G, there are some who showed a slight concern that not enough research had been done before it was released. The reality is that this research was done and it was found to be completely safe, but many would-be users were unaware that this had been done and they were in fact the ones who hadn't done enough research. Some conspiracy theorists pointed to the fact that entirely new infrastructure was needed for 5G to be implemented and that this could only mean that the governments of the world were up to something nefarious. But this too was easily explained. Since 5G operates via shorter, more powerful radio waves, it's possible that trees and even raindrops could interfere with the signal, and hence small cells had to be installed on existing towers and utility structures. More towers were also added, since 5G isn't as adept at traveling through solid structures, such as walls, meaning that more relay points were needed to ensure that the signal could be used without an eruption. Despite all these conspiracy claims being debunked, there were still many people who were reluctant to use 5G, since they believed it could cause other adverse effects such as cancer. This theory has been around for some time, long before 5G was introduced, as some people suggested that just using a cell phone could make its users susceptible to the disease. Today, we've grown used to 5G and most of us revel in its faster speeds and better connectivity. But there are still some conspiracy theorists who refuse to accept that it is safe to use, even four years after it was introduced to the world. Number 8. We're all familiar with the Titanic and the tragedy that ensued during its maiden voyage from Southampton, England to New York on the 15th of April, 1912, four days after it set out with around 2,200 passengers aboard. At about 20 minutes before midnight, the ship struck an iceberg in the North Atlantic Ocean, 
and just two hours and 40 minutes later, it disappeared beneath the icy waters, costing more than 1,500 people their lives, with 710 people living to tell the tale. In the aftermath of the tragedy, it was found that there were many factors that contributed to the large loss of life, including the fact that not all of the ship's lifeboats were filled to capacity before being lowered into the water. There were no binoculars aboard for lookouts to spot icebergs in the way, and some passengers were given preferential treatment when the lifeboats were being deployed. Others believed that the ship's sinking could have been avoided altogether if it had been sailing at a lower speed, since it would have provided more time to avoid the collision with the iceberg. Since that day, many studies have been carried out to glean more information about the tragedy, and they've resulted in some interesting theories, including one that suggests that a solar storm may have contributed to the ship striking the iceberg. Weather researcher Myla Zinkova has noted that many passengers reported seeing an aurora on that fateful night, and that it may have been the result of a geomagnetic storm, which in turn may have affected the Titanic's compass. She suggested that it may have had an adverse effect on the ship's telegraph equipment, and that this may have caused distress calls of CQD to go unheeded, as they were never received by other ships in the area. The Carpathia, a ship that was sailing about three hours away, did receive one of the distress calls and immediately made its way to the Titanic, but it would later be discovered that they'd received incorrect coordinates, something that may have been caused by errors in the sinking ship's compass. It's been noted in the past, when a powerful solar storm occurs, it can result in transmissions being sent to the wrong receiver, or in some instances being blocked altogether. And if this is indeed what happened while the Titanic was sinking, it would certainly have contributed to the loss of hundreds of lives that could have been saved. Some of the survivors recalled that while waiting to be rescued from the lifeboats, they saw a bright green aurora above them with one man, Lawrence Beasley, describing the light as arching across the northern sky. This theory has never been proven or debunked, but there remains a distinct possibility that the Titanic's compass was affected by the solar storm, and that the wrong coordinates were sent out to other ships in the area. Number 7. J.K. Rowling is one of the most recognizable names in modern literature since she is the author of the hugely popular Harry Potter novels, in which a young wizard and his friends attend a school of wizardry called Hogwarts. After the books were published, a series of movies were introduced, which thrust the author even further into the limelight, resulting in her becoming the first novelist in history to become a billionaire. But Rowling didn't always have it as easy as she does today. In the months leading up to the first of the novels being penned, she was a single mother who was struggling to make ends meet, and at the time, she was using napkins to write down her ideas and the outline for the first of the books that she would eventually publish. The idea for the novels came to Rowling while she was sitting on a train headed to King's Cross Station in London in 1990. At the time, she was living on welfare in Edinburgh, Scotland, and once she'd created the outline for her first novel, she started writing it on a typewriter while visiting the many coffee shops in the city with her young daughter by her side. Once it was completed, she sent it to multiple publishers, but one after another declined to have it published. But in 1997, publishers Bloomsbury agreed to have it published, and Rowling was given an advance of around $3,400. Initially, just 500 copies of the book were published, but when it became a roaring success, more copies were printed, and in the following two years, it sold more than 300,000 copies. The book was then published in the United States, and from there it became a global phenomenon that included the release of box office hit movies, Harry Potter-themed snacks, action figures, clothing, and toys to name just a few. Many of her fans found her story inspiring, as it proved that anyone with the right amount of talent and tenacity could succeed if they only put their mind to it. The fourth of the books contained a total of 636 pages that Rowling managed to write in just 12 months a feat not easily achieved. But not everyone was as happy about Rowling's sudden rise to fame and fortune as her fans were. The publishing field is a notoriously hard one to crack, and many experienced novelists have labored away for decades without seeing any type of success such as what Rowling had, which made some people suspicious. Keep in mind that Rowling had never purchased a book before she got the idea for the Harry Potter novels leading some people to believe that her rags-to-riches story was a little too good to be true, 
with one woman in particular voicing her concerns over the veracity of Rowling's account of the events leading up to her rise to stardom. Nina Grunfeld, a Norwegian film director, has stated that she's very doubtful that Rowling became as successful as she did by pinning the ideas that she had while on a delayed train that day. Firstly, she stated that it would be virtually impossible for someone who's still unknown in the publishing world to gain as much recognition in such a small time frame as Rowling did, since she felt that there were many authors who were far more talented, but who had seen very little success after many years of writing. The fact remains, though, that the books were published and became a roaring success. But Grunfeld believes that there's far more to the story than Rowling is letting on, and that she isn't actually the one who wrote the books. She suggested that Rowling is merely an actress who was given the task of being the face behind the Harry Potter franchise. She adds that the books may have actually been written by a team of authors who were paid to turn out as many pages as they could, and that the books were then published under Rowling's name since her rags-to-riches story would make a nice addition to the fantasy-style storytelling of the novels. But this theory has been refuted by many other publishers who have called attention to some flaws in Rowling's writing, which can be seen across the series of novels, indicating that a single author had written all of the books. Furthermore, many coffee shop owners in Edinburgh have stated that they were present while Rowling was working on the books. It's been suggested that these business owners are being untruthful, but convincing so many businesses to lie about the same thing would be a hard task to accomplish. Some people have pointed to the fact that the novels contain complicated spells and rules for the game of Quidditch that would have taken a long time to be figured out, but they may have failed to take into account the fact that Rowling studied at the University of Exeter, getting a French and Classics degree upon graduating. While there are still some skeptics out there, most of Rowling's fans are certain that she is indeed the author of the Harry Potter books and that she deserves the success that she's achieved. Conspiracy theories aren't just reserved for the author, though, as many Harry Potter fans have devised their own theories about some of the characters in the novels as well. Since Harry grows up in a less-than-ideal household in his aunt and uncle's house, they've suggested that he was deprived of food, resulting in hallucinations that he was in wizard training. Another theory suggests that Harry's closest friend, Ron, is actually a time traveler and that he's both Ron and Dumbledore, the school's headmaster, at the same time. These are both fun theories for fans to explore, but as for the theory that Rowling is merely a pawn in the success of the Harry Potter franchise, it seems extremely unlikely. Number 6. Most people believe that life as a celebrity in Hollywood is filled with nothing but glitz and glamour. And while it is certainly an enviable life to some, at least to most, it also comes with many pitfalls that most of us would rather not deal with. Many people have cited that the lack of privacy would be their main concern, since celebrities' lives are constantly being scrutinized, not only by their fans, but also by members of the media and money-hungry paparazzi. While many very well-known actors have managed to retain relatively normal lives, despite seeing massive amounts of success as actors, others find it harder to come to terms with all the attention, and this can often be exacerbated by strange conspiracy theories that pop up from time to time. Some celebrities who have passed away are the subjects of conspiracy theories that claim they're still alive. These include Elvis Presley, Tupac Shakur, Jim Morrison, and Michael Jackson, to name just a few. Another theory spawned in 1993, when Marissa Tamai won a Best Supporting Actress Academy Award for her role in the movie My Cousin Vinny. Tamai was the only actress in the nominees list who'd not received classic training, and hence many people were surprised by her win. This resulted in a conspiracy theory that Tamai's name had been erroneously read out as the winner. They believed that the award organizers were too mortified to correct the mistake, and hence just let her keep the award to avoid embarrassment. But one conspiracy theory seems to have taken the internet by storm over the past few years, as many people have started noticing similarities between Hollywood A-listers and historical figures, suggesting that they're the same immortal person. One fan noticed a painting from 1875 in which a French actor named Paul Mounet was portrayed. Upon closer inspection, they revealed that he was strikingly similar to Keanu Reeves, and in no time a conspiracy theory was born. It suggests that Reeves and Mounet are the same person, and that he's been alive since at least the 1500s. It goes on to state that he then sold his soul to the devil in 1581, 
and in exchange, he would not only be granted immortality, but given the gift of becoming a masterful loot player. Nicolas Cage has also been mentioned in theories surrounding immortality, though his follows a slightly different narrative. In his case, it's said that the current Nicolas Cage is the 27th iteration of a man who lived around 400 AD. The hypothesis is that he somehow managed to clone himself multiple times throughout the centuries, a theory that many support by pointing to a painting from 1870 in which a man who looks remarkably like Cage is posing for a portrait. Then there's the strange conspiracy theory surrounding Sylvester Stallone, likely originating thanks to his bulky build, a droop to one side of his face, and a speech impediment that was the result of complications during birth. The outlandish theory suggests that Stallone is in fact a man who lived during the Paleolithic era and that he somehow became trapped in a glacier while he was still alive. This caused his metabolism to slow, resulting in near immortality. Others have suggested that in the 1100s he served as a pope, and this theory came to light after someone spotted the similarities between Stallone and Pope Gregory XI in a painting of the Pope from the 12th century. Most of these celebrity conspiracy theories are meant to be taken with a grain of salt, but strangely, there are many people who believe them to be true, no matter how unlikely that may seem. Number 5. The Loch Ness Monster, one of the world's most well-known cryptids, was first spotted centuries ago by an Irish priest. Many people are unaware that its legend is as old as it is, and if it's ever proven to exist, it would mean that the creature, or at least its offspring, have been in the Loch Ness area for many hundreds of years. Since then, hundreds if not thousands of people have reported their own sightings of the creature, with some even providing photographic or video evidence though these have never been found to be conclusive proof of its existence, since the creature is usually out of focus or too far away to identify conclusively. Many of these sightings have been found to be the subject of logs floating in the water, large schools of fish that are mistaken for a single object, or in some cases, mere shadows in the water that just happen to resemble the famous creature. There have also been several hoaxes where people claim to have photographed the monster in a bid for a quick payday but these are usually swiftly identified and exposed for the fake sightings that they are. But Nessie isn't the only lake monster out there. Another similar creature is rumored to exist in Montana, specifically in Flathead Lake, which stretches over 200 square miles and reaches depths of 300 feet. As is the case with the Loch Ness Monster, the Flathead Lake Monster has sightings dating back hundreds of years, the first of which was recorded by the Kutenai Native American tribe, which at the time lived on an island surrounded by the lake. The legend goes that the tribe was home to two girls, both of whom had certain spiritual powers. At the time, the lake had been frozen over, and the two girls were on their way home when they saw something peculiar in the water. They realized that it was a set of antlers and made the decision to retrieve them. They picked up a few rocks that would be used to remove the antlers, and upon reaching the spot, they set about hitting the antlers with the rocks in hopes that they could break them free from the ice. Unbeknownst to them, the antlers were still attached to their owner, a lake monster that then woke up and broke through the ice. The girls used their powers to transform into inanimate objects, fooling the monster. But the tale continues to describe an ensuing disaster brought on by the monster shaking free from the ice. This caused a crack to form that then reached all the way to the tribe's island, causing something akin to an earthquake. As the island shook, half of the tribe was thrown into the icy water, where they never emerged again. The legend fell dormant for many years until 1889, when a steamboat captain named James C. Kerr reported that he had come across the same beast while he and more than 100 of his passengers were making their way across the lake. At first, one of the passengers pointed out that he'd spotted a large log in the water. But when the boat got closer to the object, a massive creature suddenly broke through the surface. And to their surprise, they came face to face with an animal that some described as eel-like, while others described it as resembling a whale. One of the passengers panicked and produced a firearm, which he then leveled at the creature before firing. This seemingly scared it, and it disappeared beneath the lake once more. Those who have spotted the creature in modern times describe it as about 20 feet in length with an eel-like appearance. Its skin is said to be of a dark blue color, and some say that it has large black eyes. 
Since there have been some discrepancies in the descriptions given by witnesses, some people believe that the Flathead Lake monster isn't the only cryptid living in the lake. Other witnesses have reported seeing a massive fish-like animal swimming in the water, using a huge tail to propel it through the lake. On one occasion, a young boy went missing at the lake, and when he was eventually found, he stated that he had fallen into the water. When his mother asked how he had managed to swim to safety, he stated that the Flathead Lake monster found him in the water and helped him make his way to shore. Sightings of the strange creature are still reported today, and while the Flathead Lake monster isn't as well known as Nessie, there are many people who are convinced that it is real and that it's been living in the area for centuries. Number 4. Centralia, a mining town situated in Pennsylvania, used to be a busy community back in the 1960s. But a fire that was set in that year has transformed the town into a shell of its former self and has given rise to a number of conspiracy theories. During the 1850s, it was discovered that the town sat atop a huge deposit of anthracite coal that was worth an inordinate amount of money. And shortly after, many miners flocked to the area to extract as much of the coal as they could. But this gave rise to crime in the area, most of which had been attributed to a gang called the Mollies that traveled to the area from Ireland in the 1860s. In 1877, many of the town's residents had had enough of the gang's antics, and they were forcefully removed, ensuring calm return to the area once more. From then on, the town only grew, and eventually it became home to more than 2,700 residents, most of whom were the families of men working in the mines. But their fortunes would soon take an unexpected turn, likely thanks to a defunct mine pit that served as a trash dump. In May of 1962, the townsfolk were looking forward to celebrating Centralia's Memorial Day, but many of the residents were unhappy with the smells that were coming from the dump site not to mention the rats and other critters that had been attracted by this stage. The solution was a simple one. Rather than collect all of the trash that had heaped up in the pit over the years, the city council decided that it would be faster, easier, and much more cost-effective to set it all alight. But this had consequences that may seem obvious to us today, but seemingly didn't occur to anyone else at the time. The fire eventually reached the bottom of the pit, and in a very short time, set fire to the coal seam that ran beneath the town. This resulted in carbon monoxide gas spreading through the mining tunnels that had been dug, and soon the mines had to be shut down, since they were far too unsafe to continue working in. Some of the town's residents reported that they had to flee from their homes when the gas started to seep through their floorboards, and a short while later, it was discovered that the fire was causing large sinkholes to appear. There was only one thing to be done, the fires had to be extinguished, but this would not be an easy task. It was suggested that wet sand might stifle the fire's air supply, but when this was done, it had little effect, and the blaze continued unabated, as it still does today. There have been many business owners who have suggested that the fire might be extinguished by digging it out. These suggestions are usually accompanied by requests that whoever does the digging will be allowed to mine the remaining coal but unsurprisingly, these have always been rejected by the council. This has resulted in a few conspiracy theories, the most prominent being that the fires were set with the intention of turning Centralia into a ghost town, since the council and government would have free reign over any coal that's extracted, which would result in massive profits. Some people have pointed to the fact that the U.S. government doesn't seem too interested in putting the fires out, and they believe this only verifies that there's something underhanded going on. But not everyone is as quick to jump to conclusions. Author David DeCock has been researching the Centralia fires for many years, and has stated that there's not a single shred of evidence to support this conspiracy theory. Furthermore, bituminous coal is in high demand in modern times, while the anthracite coal that lies beneath Centralia is far less valuable than it used to be back in the 60s, and it's only losing value as the years pass by. The town was eventually condemned by the government in 1992 and the fire still rages on unabated today. Some people believe that it will eventually burn out, since they estimate that there isn't much coal left underground. But others aren't as sure, since there's no way of telling how much coal is burned and how much remains. Number 3. In 2015, 60-year-old Kathleen Denise and her family, originally from Waterbury, Connecticut, had been vacationing at Salty Brine Beach in Rhode Island for the past 30 years, since they all enjoyed the sun and surf every year. 
This year was no different, as the weather was good and the family was having a good time on the beach. But one afternoon in July, they experienced an event that no one was able to explain at the time. And as is often the case with these types of events, it resulted in some interesting conspiracy theories. That morning, many of the beachgoers who were present reported that they could smell gas that they thought might be either sulfur or butane, something that would send anyone's alarm bells ringing. Strangely, the smell didn't seem to cause anyone too much unease. But this would soon change when some of the people on the beach started hearing sounds that they described as similar to firecrackers being set off. Next, they became aware of a strange rumbling sound coming from beneath the sand. And in the next moment, the beach erupted from an explosion that was described as either a gas explosion or a grenade going off. As for Kathleen and her family, they were in the middle of the explosion and Kathleen was thrown from her beach chair and landed about 10 feet away from the rest of the group. She'd make a full recovery from the incident, which was described in detail by her sister, Laura DiMartino. She stated that she first realized that something was wrong when she heard a loud bang, but she couldn't figure out where it was coming from. Just a moment later, she realized that she could see some of the rocks on the beach seemingly shifting and moving around, and she knew something bad was about to happen. She shouted to the rest of the family to get up off the sand, but they had no time to do so before the sand erupted around them. The result of the blast was a large rift in the sand, which was later inspected by officials after the beach was closed down. Strangely, a work crew that was spotted at the beach after the explosion found a thick underground cable running beneath the sand, and a news crew would later learn that multiple different agencies had been summoned to retrieve the cable for reasons unknown. At the time, it wasn't known what the cable's purpose was, but an excavator was eventually brought in to aid in the effort, since crews were unable to retrieve it by hand. The cable was then cut up into sections and eventually removed from the beach. The Rhode Island Department of Environmental Management later reported that not only the Coast Guard, but the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers showed interest in the unidentified cable, and that representatives from each of these agencies had been spotted inspecting it before it was hauled away. The beach was thoroughly inspected and was found to have no natural gas line under the sand. Furthermore, there was no evidence that a blast had taken place at all, since none of the sand was scorched and there were no traces of any gases being present. Some people started to speculate that an explosive device had been placed under the sand by persons unknown, but given the evidence in the aftermath of the blast, this seems highly unlikely. Theories then shifted to the possibility that the explosion was the result of seismic activity, since witnesses saw large rocks on the beach shifting before the explosion. But seismologists assured them that there's been no such event recorded by any seismic equipment at the beach or anywhere in Rhode Island on that day. A well-known conspiracy theorist named Dan Bedondi caught wind of the event and traveled to Salty Brine Beach to interview people in the area since he was convinced that the explosion was caused by some kind of device. But he seemed to be largely ignored by passers-by, who stated that they were sure that the beach had been made safe once more. Scientists later took core samples of the beach and found that it contained unusually high levels of hydrogen. It's believed that this may have caused the blast, with one expert stating that if conditions were just right, the gas could be set off by something as simple as someone stubbing a cigarette in the sand. Number 2. The city of Myrtle Beach in South Carolina is no stranger to sightings of strange things in the sky. On one occasion, on the 24th of May, 2021, a woman and her family were visiting a resort in the area, and while sitting on her room's balcony, she saw two orange orbs overhead. She immediately called her husband, and as he arrived, another of the orbs appeared, as if out of nowhere. Her husband also saw the three orbs, but just a few moments later, they disappeared again, leaving him a self-confessed skeptic with no plausible explanation. In January of that same year, another visitor to the area reported that he'd also been sitting on his room's balcony one night, and at the time, he was looking at the Orion constellation in the sky. He then noticed four bright orange spheres that had appeared, accompanied by a fifth, much larger object that suddenly appeared over the ocean in front of him. He added that the objects were traveling through the sky with no effort whatsoever, and he then realized that they were approaching the shore. But just a few moments later, all five of the spheres suddenly sped up and flew off to his left and out of sight. 
But just a short while later, they reappeared over the water before accelerating towards the beach once more and disappearing. The man had no explanation, and he would later reveal that he had an extensive military background, including working with special intelligence, and he'd never seen anything like the five objects before. Another report was given on the 1st of September, 2020, after a witness described seeing a strange floating cylindrical object in the sky while he was sitting next to a pool. He added that it was a very clear day and that there wasn't a single cloud in the sky. He grabbed his binoculars and saw that the object seemed to be metallic and that it had a bright light on top. The object made no sound as it hung in the sky and he was able to observe it for as many as 20 minutes before it slowly descended behind a line of trees and out of his sight. On the 22nd of June that same year, a family vacationing in the area was on their balcony watching a fireworks display when they saw a bright orange glowing object in the sky. They described it as being cigar-shaped and that it seemed to pulse with intense light. They were able to track the object for about 15 seconds before it inexplicably started to shrink and eventually faded away, leaving them in disbelief at what they had just seen. But there is another phenomenon that's been witnessed by many people in Myrtle Beach over the years, as many people have reported seeing strange clouds that left them completely at a loss for an explanation. In 2011, Wesley Tyler, an IT technician, was in the middle of a job when he realized that he'd left a computer part in his car. And so he went out to the parking lot to retrieve it, but as he walked outside, he saw something he had never seen before. In the sky, he noticed three identical holes in the cloud cover above him, and the first thought that he had was that he needed to get to his phone. He took a few photos of the strange light and later posted them to his Facebook account. This resulted in several conspiracy theories, including the suggestion that the government was engaging in a secret military experiment, though no one has mentioned what these experiments were. After posting the photos, Wesley received emails from all over the world with people speculating that the sighting might be proof that the world was ending or that we were being visited by extraterrestrial beings from other planets. The far more likely explanation is that this is a phenomenon known as a hole punch cloud. This occurs when a jet flies close by the cloud cover and its trails then intersect with the cloud cover, resulting in something similar to a tiny snowstorm which then leaves holes behind. While this explanation is enough to appease most people, the same cannot be said of some conspiracy theorists who insist that this sighting and hundreds like it all over the world are caused by something more sinister, such as aliens or nefarious government activities. Number 1. In recent years, we've started looking at the possibility of sending humans to Mars, since the possibility exists that the planet could be terraformed and eventually turned into a second home though this won't happen for a very long time if it ever does. We've since sent rovers to the planet to explore its surface, and in doing so, we've learned a lot about its atmosphere, its surface, and some of the landmarks that we've observed from afar for many decades. It's an undertaking that seems almost too fantastical to ever become reality. But in 2021, a TikTok user suggested a conspiracy theory that took the internet by storm and his video racked up more than 230,000 views and around 10,000 shares. The user, who goes by the moniker Crackhead Joe Dirt, started his theory by stating that he didn't believe the planet Mars was the distinctive red color that we've all grown accustomed to. He then stated that there's a reason why it's red today, and he believes it's the result of a nuclear fallout that occurred during a war that was waged on Mars. He added that this meant that humans once lived on Mars, but they eventually destroyed it when a nuclear war broke out. In his video, Crackhead Joe Dirt states that if enough nuclear explosions took place on the planet, it would result in a nuclear fallout that would have lasted for centuries as nuclear winter set in. He explained that depending on the amount of ash present in the planet's atmosphere, a nuclear winter could have lasted as many as 1,000 years and that this would have had a detrimental effect on the planet's natural resources. Furthermore, he stated that he believes Mars was once a planet rich with resources, such as clear water and plants, much like Earth today, and he suggests that this is no coincidence. Many people bought into his theory that we as humans first lived on Mars thousands of years ago, but that we had to flee to a new planet, Earth, once the war had taken its toll on the planet and it was no longer habitable. 
Crackhead Joe Dirt also makes sure to point out that scientists have suggested that water once flowed over the surface of Mars, and hence he's convinced that it had many other natural resources that could have sustained human life for a very long time. He then explained that the planet only turned red once the nuclear winter was over, since it's the result of all the water drying up and other naturally occurring resources such as minerals being obliterated by radiation. But many people were quick to point out large errors in his theory. Firstly, scientists know that there hasn't been any water on Mars for as many as 3 billion years, a much longer time period than any nuclear winter could possibly last. Secondly, it's been suggested that a nuclear winter on a planet the size of Earth would take just a few years or a maximum of a decade to pass, making crackhead Joe Dirt's figure of a thousand years seem ridiculous. It should be noted that our top scientists are unsure how long a nuclear winter would last, and hence there's no way that crackhead Joe Dirt would have this information when even seasoned experts are still trying to find that particular answer. As for where all of the water that once existed on Mars went, it's believed that most of it was absorbed by the large rocks that had been observed on the planet's surface, while the rest was likely lost when the planet's atmosphere could no longer hold it on its surface. But many people still asked why the planet has its red color, if not from a nuclear war. The explanation is nowhere near as outlandish as the TikToker's hypothesis. The fact is that the planet is covered in iron oxide, or rust, which also causes its sky to have an orange hue, since iron oxide particles are present in the atmosphere. Since Mars is a smaller planet than Earth, it has a weaker gravitational pull, which means that unlike Earth, iron oxide particles don't seek into the planet's core, but rather remain on its surface, and this has resulted in its red appearance, or so scientists believe. The possibility certainly does exist that life was once present on Mars a very, very long time ago but the chances that this would have been human life are virtually zero. Since we believe that there was water on its surface, it may have been home to small organisms, but for now we have no evidence to back this theory up, and until we explore the planet further, we can rest assured that no human has likely ever lived on Mars. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to keep up to date with all of our future uploads. But my name is Ty Knotts, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.